Sometimes you get the answer you need, but not the answer you want. And I did need this answer. I, well, I needed a answer. But I don't know, I was just hoping that it wasn't the answer. Do you know what I mean? Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back lovely people, lovely to see you and a massive welcome to anyone who is new and watching my videos for the very first time. It's great to have you here and if you're enjoying my content, please do hit that big red subscribe button because it really does help my channel. If you want to go a step further and help even more, then please also check out the join button for how to become a friend of Finn. So let's get on to today's video, which is going to be a little bit of a Finn waffle because I promised I would catch up with you about all of my health investigations into why I have Fred in my life. Fred is my pet name for this chronic fatigue I've been struggling with over the last four years, but that has got really severe and permanent really over the last eight months. And I had one final test left and I said I would update after that. So that's what this is gonna be about today. And it's gonna be a bit of a rant about how I'm feeling about all of this and it's going to be a very honest rant as per usual so strap in so my final test was a echocardiogram i had a seven day ecg where they attached electrodes for a week and monitor your heart the reason being is one of the symptoms i get alongside the debilitating fatigue is heart palpitations and heart pounding which is incredibly unnerving especially when you have a family history of heart disease. I lost my dad to cardiomyopathy. My mum had angina and she had lots of heart problems. So it's been a worry. I'm pleased to say that all of those tests have come back negative. They do show that I have something called ectopic beats, where I have an extra heartbeat here and there. It also shows that I have a fast heart rate at times. But other than that, my heart is healthy. So all the experience, all the feelings I'm having as disturbing as they are, they're not actually dangerous. They're not gonna harm my heart. And it's a relief to hear that. But it does then mean that with everything ruled out that this could possibly be, all that remains now to explain the fatigue and all the other symptoms is ME-CFS. And of course, at this point, eight months in after my doctor first suggested this, I knew he was right. You know, the more I've learned over these last eight months, the clearer it is that I've got all the hallmark symptoms of ME-CFS. It's clear. But there was still that hope there that they might find out that there was something else. And I'm so ashamed to say that I would have preferred them to find something wrong with my heart that could have been fixed with tablets or surgery than ME-CFS. And that's because there's no guarantee with ME-CFS. This is a long-term disabling, serious condition that has no clear pathway really. It varies person to person, as does whether you recover or not. Some people do make a full recovery. Others make enough of a recovery to live their life, but they're forever changed by it some go on to be worse it's it's a lot so but i'm honest you know i i would have rather it had been something else as serious as a heart condition would be at least it would be fixable compared to me cfs <sighs> so after these results came in my doctor called and that's interesting, isn't it? As anyone in the UK knows at the moment, trying to get an appointment with a doctor is quite hard. And I desperately just wanted to talk through everything with him and what this meant now, you know, because as far as I was aware, I needed a referral on to our local ME CFS service so that I could be given some support and what have you. The only treatment, as I've mentioned a few times, is pacing techniques to control how much energy you exert so that you don't have these huge crashes. And it would have been psychological support and things like that through this ME-CFS service. So I wanted to talk to my doctor to get that ball rolling. He finally rang. And I have to be honest and say that I felt really let down when he rang. Now, when I spoke to my doctor eight months ago, I shared on here how amazing he is. 
he is the first person that's ever really properly listened. You know, I've been going back and forth to the doctors for the last four years for this now. That this fatigue has been ongoing. You know, I would have like weeks of it, then it would disappear. Weeks of it disappear, but gradually getting worse over time. And the other symptoms that come with it getting worse over time. And then, as you know, when I moved last year, they became permanent. And I got the fatigue back, but rather than it just be for like a couple of weeks as per usual, it stayed. And it's just got progressively worse and worse and worse over this last eight months specifically. So when I spoke to him and he really did listen for the first time, it was such a relief. And I thought, this is great. I'm definitely on the right path with this doctor. But I think what's happened is that since I last saw my doctor, I've got much more informed about MECFS. And so now I realize that some of the things he's saying aren't really in line with current thinking on MECFS. MECFS has a lot of stigma attached to it still. It's often something that's misunderstood as a functional illness, i.e. something that is wrong with your brain in terms of, you know, your, your brain's been trained to overreact to situations around you as if you're in pain or tired or what have you. But we now know that that's not the case with MECFS. MECFS is not a functional illness. It is a neurological illness that affects multiple systems of the body. Heart, lungs, nervous system, brain. You know, this is see, it's seen in the cells of people with MECFS that we don't produce energy properly. This is not a functional illness that you can think yourself out of. As me and my doctor were chatting, and I said, you know, so it, does this mean now that this is MECFS? And he said, yes, yes, absolutely it does. And I was explaining that, you know, I, I would really like to be referred on now for more help because I'm really struggling, especially with coming to terms with this. And I started to explain, you know, how much it's stolen from my life that I'm housebound most of the time because I can't walk very far. And if I do walk even like a short distance to the doctor's around the corner, which is five minutes, that can wipe me out anything from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. You know, there's no rhyme or reason to it sometimes. Sometimes it would just, it, even the smallest thing like a shower will wipe me out. So I am spending most of my days in bed. I'm in this office once a fortnight at the moment to record a video. It's devastating to have this wonderful new office that we've moved flat and this is amazing office and I can't use it. I am in bed because even sitting up, even talking to you now, look, my heart rate is 125. Sitting up sends my heart rate up, my palpitations start, I get exhausted. The only place I can get any comfort is on my bed, lying back on cushions, and then that way I can do the odd hours work here and there. Very light work at the moment, it's just admin stuff. It's really, it's really upsetting to be watching my life disappear like this. It's devastating. And I'm, I've learned over these last eight months that, you know, this is what I've got to do to get better. That actually pushing through it previously has done a lot of damage and I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be pushing through it you know it's to me it's counterintuitive to just lie back I've learned with mental health that you just get on and you push through it you know but I've now realized that all that pushing through I did with this fatigue has made things worse so anyway I'm explaining all this to the doctor and he said oh yes yeah we should get you some help what I'll probably do is refer you on for some CBT and at first I was like oh you know that's okay that's fine because any help to come to terms with the changes it's making is worth it. But then he started saying about, you know, because at the end of the day, it's not helpful because the more you don't go out, the more your body will just respond badly to going out because you're conditioning yourself to stay in and to, to, to not go out because of what happens. And it's clear that he was going down the path of my thinking is keeping me indoors. So I stopped him and said, hang on, <laughs> it, this isn't because I'm, a, I'm afraid of going out. I've lived with anxiety for years. I'm very good at going, I'm anxious, I'm going out anyway. This is because I've learned time and time again that if I go out, even a small walk around the corner, I could be wiped out for days. That's why I'm not going out. I'm going out, I'm not going out so that I don't have these awful crashes. Now, luckily he, he listened to me and he said, yep, I hear you. I will refer you on to MECFS services. But I just feel a little bit sad about this because I thought we we're on the same page.
But now looking back to our conversations when we first met, he was very much talking about functional stuff because some of the links he sent me to have a look at were very much about like how our actions then train our brain to do certain things and then we can retrain the brain. Let me be clear, you cannot think yourself out of MECFS. This is not an illness that you can think yourself out of. It just isn't. <laughs> you know, I had a big rant on our Discord forum. Thank you so much, friends of Finn, for listening to me rant. And somebody very wisely pointed out the difference in that. If, for example, I'd been doing lots of recovery and I was a lot better, but I still wasn't going out because of fear of being poorly again, that might be something I needed help with changing my thinking around. But when I'm not going out because I know I have to watch my energy management to not crash, that's different. That's two different things, you know? So the one good thing I'll say about my doctor is that at least he did not try and push his thinking on me. He didn't say, nope, 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 this is of your mind. We must send you to a therapist. He heard me and just said, yep, great, I'll send you on to MECFS. I'm hoping that he might do a bit more reading around it because I was actually explaining to him about using my heart rate monitor and all of that. I'll link you up to last week's video if you didn't see that. So I'm hoping he might go and do a bit of research because I've gone from thinking, oh, I've got this great doctor on my side to thinking, oh, he's not quite up to scratch with where understanding is around MECFS. I should put lots of links at the bottom to explain everything about MECFS, including a blog I've written this week about coming to terms with this. And um, because at the moment I'm still learning, you know, this is only, it's only been eight months for me in terms of like having MECFS on my radar. Before this, I just thought it was my thyroid, something that would be easily fixed. So I'm still learning. So, you know, I'm occasionally getting this wrong. Bear with me, I'm on my own journey here trying to learn as well. So yeah. Disappointment there from how my doctor responded. And just <sighs> devastation, really, that I think I've been holding off from really accepting this until I actually had somebody say those words and then refer me on, you know? So it's just coming to terms with this now in, in how much this is changing my life. You know, I've already started to get mobility aids in the house to help. I've got a st stall in the shower so that I can have a shower now because standing in the shower is something that wipes me out. I've got a perching stool in the kitchen so that I can sit and chop veg and just take regular rests. Anything I do takes me forever. I'm having to do lots of resting in between everything, so trying to get anything done is just impossible. I had all of these plans and ideas that I now can't do <laughs> and I'm finding it really tough. And now I am a very positive, can-do person. I choose to focus on what I can do rather than what I can't do. But it's also really, really important when anything difficult's happening that we first acknowledge those difficult feelings. Being positive isn't about like, pushing all of the negative stuff aside and sticking your head in the sand. It's about saying, this is awful what's happening. I'm feeling that, but I can also do this. But you have to do both. You can't do one without the other. So at the moment, I'm just having to embrace the fact that I feel pretty cross about the whole thing, that I feel quite sad about the whole thing, that it's just not fair. <laughs> you know, haven't I been through enough? All of these kind of feelings are coming up. I do really desperately need some support with this. Luckily, Chris has some access to counselling via work that I can access as well. So I've got four sessions with a counsellor online um, starting the week after next. Just to talk this through, I need somewhere where I can rant about how I feel <sighs> because I've got to get through this kind of grief and loss stage before I can come to acceptance about this. So yeah, how long have I waffled on for? Goodness me, 14 minutes. I'm trying to keep these short because I know it's hard. <laughs> I know how hard it is to sit and listen to anything for more than a couple of minutes. So yeah, there's my very waffly update. By the way, if you've seen how lovely this new wall looks, look, look. How long did that take me to put up? <laughs> Eight months. Um, but that's the story of my life at the moment. You know, everything is just taking so much longer. But don't it look pretty? I have written a blog, which I will link here about this as well. So you can read that in a little bit less waffly fashion, which has got links into how MECFS is diagnosed and what post-exertional malaise is crashing and all of that. I'll do some separate videos on all of these aspects as well. Do please feel free to leave comments, questions below. 
I'm really grateful that lots of you who have been following me for years through all the trans stuff, mental health stuff, are still here now following me through this and are learning with me because lots of people have commented that they don't really understand about MECFS. So we're learning this together, aren't we? And I think I've got some new followers as well who are people who do have chronic illness. So I'm really grateful for, to you for sharing your wisdom in the comments section with me and pointing me in the right direction of books and treatments and ideas and things because it's really, 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 really helping. I am so grateful to have you all to share this with and you know me I do not take anything lying down <laughs> no pun intended okay I do take things lying down if I need to I will find a way through this I will my life is going to have to look incredibly different than it once did and that's not necessarily a bad thing as I've mentioned in a few videos recently about trauma overworking etc I can see that the way I was living was not that sustainable <laughs> I was overworking but still, it's hard to now accept and know what this new way of life is going to look like. But we'll find out together and it'll be okay. So yeah, stop waffling. I'm going to stop waffling. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me with the lack of content. My current plan is to do a blog one week and a vlog the next. Or at least alternate them, even if they're not every week. So you get in a blog and a vlog. So hopefully there'll always be some content of mine that you can check out. But yeah, thanks folks, big love, and I'll chat to you soon.